So how actually Luna EMG can be implemented for uh, the bedside treatment at early stage of rehabilitation process? Um, I would like to start with the issues that we are actually triggering in neurorehabilitation during uh, this very hard uh, pandemic period. So first of all, the hands-on therapy is a very high risk of uh, contamination. Uh, furthermore, because of the pandemic, we have lack of therapists. It's for, for example, because uh, they, they work in a shift rotation from, um, from uh, the quarantine. And uh, we also need the equipments and the devices which are easy uh, to disinfect and to change um, the place from the patient to the patient. And also some scientists actually from Italy, they reported uh, already some COVID-19 related neurological complications, um, which uh, are observed uh, among patients who are discharged from COVID-19 units. Uh, of course, uh, these um, uh, complications are something more than the respiratory uh, disorders and the, they require the respiratory rehabilitation and motor rehabilitation. Um, who is on the first line of fire? Of course, they are the doctors, the nurses, but they are also physiotherapists. And physiotherapists are on equal footing with other professionals who actually are at risk of contracting uh, COVID-2 virus. So a contact with a physiotherapist and the therapy, especially with the patients who are um, in the severe condition, very, a very acute phase, this contact is long lasting and direct. They need a lot of support and a lot of hands-on therapy. Um, all neurorehabilitation treatment is really based on contact techniques. So uh, we use the PNF concept, the Bobat concept, everything is a lot of uh, contact on the patient with the therapist. So this contact in our hard pandemic time should be really avoided because of high risk of uh, contamination. Uh, but what is really challenging that neurorehabilitation among those people cannot be further delayed. They need really ongoing rehabilitation process in order to uh, keep um, the progress of their uh, health status to, to, to get cured uh, and get um, really uh, independent uh, quicker. So um, even for people with disabilities from chronic progressive diseases, um, they, they really need the constant monitoring and care. Um, so what are the main challenges? The severe weakness in combination of, of course, tubes, lines, all that machinery, which is uh, connected strongly with the ICU um, uh, wards. Um, uh, it's really a practical barrier for the implementation of any movement rehabilitation with critical, uh, critically ill patients. But uh, early mobility requires a very significant change in the ICU practice. So um, there is a high need on reduction on uh, the bed rest, which is highly recommended on the ICU wards. Bed rest in the ICU should not be viewed as a um, uh, banning and may affect patients short term and long term recovery. What is also very challenging is that the transferring, uh, so, so the transfer movement of the acute patient from the patient's room to the rehabilitation table is very challenging uh, at early stage of rehabilitation because the patient mostly is unconscious or very weak or, um, and uh, when the patient is weak with no muscle contraction, the body is very heavy, so uh, the transfers are really challenging. 
a little bit of um, studies and the research about the ICU rehabilitation and the bedside treatment. So there was a non-randomized trial demonstrated that mechanically ventilated patients, so these are the patients mainly now in the pandemic situation, COVID patients, they are mostly mechanically ventilated for several weeks even. Um, so, um, uh, those ventilated patients that received the early PT uh, were out of bed earlier. And here we have the results that it is five versus even 11 days for the usual care. So it's a lot. And another research from Taiwan uh, demonstrated that early and intensive rehabilitation uh, of the acute post-stroke patients in neuro ICU was really feasible. And um, those pac patients started respectively like the therapy within the first four days and they received uh, a mean of half uh, normal like therapy session because they were very weak. So the therapy was uh, a little bit shorter at the beginning. Um, the early and intensive rehabilitation result on uh, improved functional outcomes, which are measured um, mostly in, with the barter scale uh, index score. Another study uh, talk about the healthcare system benefits of the early rehabilitation. So patients hospitalized for an acute illness or injury are at risk of experiencing a significant loss of functioning as defined by the International Classification of Functioning, Disability and Health, which is this ICF. Um, so here, uh, as a conclusion of this study, early identification of rehabilitation needs and early start of rehabilitation can reduce the healthcare cost by reducing the dependence and the nursing care, length of stay and prevention on, uh, of disability how uh, it is organized on the neuro ICU rehabilitation wards. Um, here, uh, another study, um, we can see that early post-stroke rehabilitation is feasible, safe, beneficial, and critic uh, in critically ill patients. So um, there is uh, also, the, the authors uh, highlight that there is a great potential for exploring the benefit of adjunctive intervention. So besides the hands-on therapy, the, the um, standard procedures, rehabilitation procedures, we can easily apply um, some complementary devices on or go with the um, rehabilitation robots even. Uh, early and intensive mobilization of patients with acute stroke appears safe and leads to improved functional outcomes, which are really long lasting. Um, so going further into the ICU rehabilitation, should we either provide the passive movement or try to get a little bit more active? What is really um, interesting in this study that the ICU rehabilitation, especially this out of bed rehabilitation, is of, often delayed. So um, the, the um, in bed exercises are generally low intensity. Yes, so we, we are uh, mostly doing it manually as a physios. Um, so, uh, since the majority of rehabilitation is carried out uh, in bed, it is really essential to carry out the exercises that have the highest intensity. Um, so, this study showed that no muscle or systemic effect were induced by the passive techniques. So, we should um, start the active um, uh, rehabilitation as soon as possible among this patient. And here, uh, Luna EMG fits perfectly because we uh, implemented it with the active assistive mode based on the EMG model. So I will talk about it a little bit uh, later. Um, last but not least, the bedside rehabilitation, another interesting study. Um, talking about the immobility due to prolonged bed rest in the ICU, 
which may play an important role in the development of um, ICU acquired weakness. Um, so this uh, immobility is associated with many complications such as uh, muscle atrophy, pressure ulcers, uh, and bone demineraliz demineralization. Long-term immobility is associated also with uh, clinical complications. And it was noticed that after seven days of mechanical ventilation, about 25% uh, of patients experience clinically evident neuromuscular weakness. So very short period of time. Um, what should we do? Um, First of all, to reduce the ICU acquired weakness, um, the avoidance of bed rest um, with the use of early mobilization in the ICU setting is really needed. And how about the exercises implementation? Uh, we should start, of course, from passive range of motion, but we should end the ICU um, stay, uh, patient stay, um, into the motion to transferring patients from the bed to a chair. And this kind of therapy we also implement with Luna EMG. So what robots really can and can't do? So what are the pros and cons of using the robotic neurorehabilitation? Robots are uh, definitely more precise than people. They are not getting tired, they are not getting sick, they are not easily <laughs> contaminated, such as uh, this uh, COVID pandemic situation. And they can also store the data so we can observe the progress of each patient. But also robots, they are not people. So they do not provide any empathy, any human touch. They cannot provide the comprehensive therapy and they are not making decision. Always the therapist is the brain of the operation and the rehabilitation robot is just the tool in the um, um, hands of a smart uh, physiotherapist. What actually is Luna EMG? So Luna EMG is a robotic rehabilitation device dedicated for patients on different stage of rehabilitation. The most um, unique feature is the EMG triggered robotic movement. And here I would like to present you a short video uh, about to get you an idea what Luna EMG actually is. The brain uses its neuroplasticity mechanism to rewire itself and form new neural connections. The more repetitions you perform during physiotherapy, the more your brain rewires itself. As a result, mobility improves. This is where Luna EMG steps in. Luna EMG is a robotic device dedicated for neurological and orthopedic patients. It is being used as a tool to improve neuromuscular coordination, range of motion, and muscle strength. The most unique feature is the electromyography-driven robotic movement. The robot detects muscle activity and assists with the motion if patients get beyond the threshold line. Due to that, even patients with a slight muscle contraction can work actively and get better results quicker. Luna EMG is equipped with exchangeable extensions, which allows to perform the training of all major joints. We can work with our patients using games to engage the patient even more. All data and reports are stored in the system and can be presented to the patients themselves or to insurance companies. Luna EMG is used as a holistic device with passive, active and active assistive training. Robotics can help patients perform exercises beyond their limits. The brain uses it. The brain. So um, Luna EMG was really designed to provide a hands-off approach, which in COVID pandemic situation is really a gold solution. Uh, why we should provide this kind of action to give more independence to the patients, even when the patient's mobility and muscle activity is very limited. Uh, so here in the face of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this approach um, seems to be very beneficial. 
since it limits the direct contact between the patient and the therapist, uh, but still with maintaining proper movement assistance and facilitation. Uh, let me share with you a little bit uh, of our experience uh, with patients. So as you already noticed, Luna EMG can be both uh, the training and the assessment tool. Um, so for the assessment mode, we can assess the muscle activity through the um, surface EMG. We can assess muscle force, the range of motion of each joint, the main joint, and the proprioception. Uh, for the training, we can use EMG biofeedback, EMG assistive movement, uh, passive motion, and for those patients who are more strong, which uh, who have some muscle resistance, we can have active resistive training. How actually Luna uh, works? Um, uh, Luna EMG through the surface EMG electrodes catch the brain intention to move. So the EMG sensor actually captured the voluntary electrical activity on the muscle, which is presented as an EMG signal. Uh, based on this signal, uh, Luna EMG responds directly to the user um, and to him his uh, desire to move. Uh, the limb through the real-time interactive EMG signal, which is uh, on the real-time displayed on the screen. So based on that chain of action, patients receive the positive feedback and on the biofeedback mechanism uh, here enables the motor relearning and muscle re-education. And uh, here you can see uh, how does uh, really the EMG evaluation look like. And uh, two uh, lines, like the red line and the blue line, uh, these are the lines uh, presenting the muscle activity of the uh, observed muscle. Uh, through uh, by using uh, Luna EMG, we can use a different kind of um, therapy possibilities. So, where uh, when there is no activity and no movement, we can use the passive exercises. Where there the, when there is the activity but no movement, so we can observe these uh, curves uh, on the EMG signal. So the patient is presenting some muscle activity. We can use the assistive modes, so the reactive electromyography and EMG biofeedback. Uh, and for those patients who are a little bit stronger, we can have the activity. Uh, with resistance. So here we can use the dynamic reversal, elastic resistance program, weightlifting, and some proprioception exercises. Um, so let me talk about the bedside training a little bit more in details. Um, common applications of Luna EMG for the acute phase rehabilitation are post-stroke patients, Mm, patients who are immobilized in bed from different reasons. They might be the elderly, um, some post-surgery patients, of course, ICU patients, COVID-19 patients. So they are really me mechanically ventilated for really a couple of weeks. Um, Post-traumatic patients, palliative care patients, geriatric patients who are immobilized in bed. So a lot, lot of uh, possibilities to uh, apply Luna EMG. Here uh, is our in-bed therapy experience. So you can see that Luna EMG can be applied uh, for um, lower limb, for the upper limb training, and also for the trunk. And at, uh, as it was already presented on the uh, scientific research slides, uh, we can provide the therapy from the supine position, so from the very beginning, the passive movement into the patient's uh, uh, sitting position. Right? So, so the, the sitting position in bed or the sitting position um, next uh, to bed. So here is, is more um, like stronger patients who, who really 
uh, is uh, closely to, to discharge from, from, from the hospital. And also we can use a Luna EMG uh, extensions, but we can also train the patient without the extension by the use of the EMG biofeedback to, um, for example, work on his balance or to work on the trunk stability. Um, so just briefly to prevent the, when we want to prevent the effects of immobilization, we mostly recommend to use the CPM, so the continuous passive movement. Um, when we want to work on the range of motion improvement, we use the CPM, CPM progressive, and some active reactive electromyography programs. So our trigger and release and trigger and hold. Uh, when the patient is also willing to, we can apply the orthopedic games to get him more engaged into therapy. Um, to improve muscle strength, uh, we recommend to use the elastic resistance, weightlifting, dynamic reversal, and orthopedic rehabilitation games. When we want to focus on muscle activity improvement, definitely here comes the EMG assistive mode, so reactive electromyography, EMG biofeedback, and reactive electromyography games. To improve proprioception, we uh, recommend to use our proprioception training programs, so joint position sense, both hidden and visible mode. Our treatment suggestions. We recommend to start the exercise, if possible, for 15 to half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour for one joint, and to start the therapy, of course, with the CPM, or the progressive CPM for five to 10 minutes. And of course, depending on the patient's condition, we can keep just the CPM mode for a couple of days. And when the patient is getting more conscious and um, it's getting stronger, we can apply um, more active uh, therapy. Uh, following the researchers' recommendations, we suggest to start the exercise in supine position and then to move into the sitting position. Of course, it's all dependent on, uh, on patient's uh, actual, actual condition. Um, Luna ENG uh, is really portable device, so we can um, move uh, the device from one side bed to another side of bed. Uh, we know that the patients in the acute care has a lot of monitors, a lot of other devices which are monitoring his health status. So we should be really um, uh, we should try really to apply this kind of, of therapy, uh, even though those monitors and all the lines and tubes are there. Um, weak patients, so even the unconscious patients, so when he uh, has no muscle contractions, we recommend to use the CPM program to uh, prevent joint contractures. Um, we had some, uh, our, our partners, they had some experience with the patients uh, who had a coma, in the coma state. So uh, they applied the CPM program and also they applied um, the EMG uh, evaluation mode. So just to observe the muscle activity during the passive movement, if the patient is a little bit um, active during this uh, movement or not. And they were also uh, giving some uh, voice um, feedback. So try to help with the movement and so on. And they were observing the reaction of the patient. And with some patients, there was really the activity shown on the, uh, the higher activity of the muscle shown on the screen. Um, flickering contractions, we recommend to use the reactive electromyography uh, when the patient uh, gets the full range of motion and um, we can work with gravity eliminated. So here comes the gamified rehabilitation and also the reactive electromyography. 
full range of motion with uh, gravity. Uh, of course, we can work with the resistive programs, so dynamic reversal, resistive programs, proprioception training, and also gamified rehabilitation. Um, last but not least, the EMG biofeedback, which is uh, very good for the uh, trunk activity improvement. And also we can work uh, with the patient both in supine and in the sitting position. So we can train the trunk and uh, prepare him for the changing the position for further uh, walking exercises, gait exercises, and also very important balance training. Um, I would also like to, to, to add a little bit about the disinfection. Luna EMG is really easy to disinfect, so it's easy to uh, apply Luna and to, to let Luna work on the ICU wards, on a very acute phase rehabilitation, neuro rehabilitation wards. Uh, you can uh, use for the disinfection the um, basic disinfection products which are used for other devices in the hospital. So you just spray it and then clean with the, uh, with the tissue. Um, a small take home message. So uh, in what areas robots can add values? First of all, they provide the hands of therapy. Uh, neuro rehabilitation needs active work with patient and uh, by active work, he is achieving more and more and better results. Luna EMG also um, enable to work with more patients at the same time so we can for example, start with the CPM mode with one patient, and then we can apply hands-on therapy in the same time with another patient. And also uh, the advantage of uh, robots are that, that they are really easy to disinfect, so they can also work on the um, acute uh, rehabilitation wards. Um, for now, I would like to thank you for uh, your attention. And here is the question and uh, answer session. Uh, so I am really um, waiting for, for your question. Okay, the only question I see that uh, if the meeting is being recorded and uh, if it's possible to rewatch it, yes, the, the, the meeting is recorded and you can, of course, re, re watch it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I would also like to invite you for uh, another uh, webinar. Uh, the upcoming webinar would be about the oncological rehabilitation. So how Luna EMG can be used for the therapy of patients with functional deficits as a result of cancer treatment. And this webinar will take place on 23rd of uh, February. Uh, 8 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, so please save the date and uh, join us for, for this webinar. Um, the patient, the, the questions, how to do the trunk training by EMG mode? Well, you apply the EMG electrodes on the um, trunk and then you work with the patient through the head or through the limbs. So as a therapist, you can ask the patient to raise the, the head above the, the pillow, for example. And by this movement, the trunk exercises are in the contractions. So um, here by EMG biofeedback mode, you can keep the contractions for several seconds. 
just to um, learn to the patient how to contract those muscles, how to activate them and how to um, make them stronger. Um, more questions. Um, yes, you can share this with your LinkedIn uh, customers, of course. Uh, how Luna EMG is different from normal EMG we use? Luna EMG has the EMG uh, model uh, for, uh, for the EMG evaluation. And uh, based on the EMG, we can also provide the therapy. So here is the EMG uh, assistive movement. So the, through the surface EMG electrodes, Luna EMG uh, detects the patient's um, ability to move or uh, intention to move. And then uh, Luna helps with the movement by using the um, extension. Yes, so, so this is the difference that by extension application, you can work with the active assistive mode for with the patients also with the very weak or uh, weak, weak muscle activity. Uh, the AMG is only one, but with multifunction. Uh, I don't really understand the question. Uh, we have the EMG cable and you can use it, yes, for, for different application. Uh, you can either have it at the diagnostic mode, so just to observe, and you can apply it in the active, resist, active um, assistive training based on the EMG signal. In COVID patient, can Luna robot help in recovery of respiratory muscle? I think yes, by using the EMG, um, electrodes and we can use the EMG biofeedback mode so we can apply these electrodes on the ribs or on the help the ventilation muscles and also ask the patient to contract and release and also monitor them within, uh, within the exhale and inhale mode. Um, previously you mentioned that Luna EMG serves post-trauma patients. Do you mean patients that suffer from? Uh, no, I don't mean the post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I mean more about the trauma, like uh, the, um, after accidents, uh, like uh, more um, body trauma, not the physical psychosomatic applications. About the psychosomatic, and the use of uh, Luna EMG, um, it's, I, th I think, more about the engagement into the therapy. So the patients who feel really very, very weak um, and they don't really believe they can perform any activity, uh, we can involve them more directly. And this is really um, very good for the um, um, well-being and it's really motivating them for, for the further rehabilitation. Uh, how to eliminate the gravity? Uh, yes, we have the um, elimination gravity uh, program. Uh, so uh, when you are applying the therapy and when you are um, uh, setting the training modes with the extension, you just have you have the the unweighting procedure, which is uh, calculating the weight of the, the limb, the weight of the extension, and by this you can um, eliminate the gravity. Um, EMG evaluation when uh, to compare it with the manual muscle test. Um, well. EMG evaluation in compared to manual muscle test is more, um, of course, more precise because we have the most sensitive EMG on the market and we can detect the very, very weak, um, very, very um, flickering and weak muscles. Uh, so even the small contraction can be really, uh, small muscle activity can be detected. So uh, for example, the patients who are really um, assessed with the zero on the manual muscle test 
cannot can really be something more by assessing them on the uh, surface uh, EMG. Yes, so the surface EMG can detect very um, little activity, which we cannot really observe uh, by um, assessing it more manual. <clears throat> Depends on the insurance system of each country compared to the conventional method. So hence on, will the costs of rehabilitation using robots be different for hospitals? Yes, I think it's it's more uh, it, it's di it differs as you mentioned um, on the healthcare system of each country on the insurance system. So um, I think it, it differs. It's about the calculating the costs of of the procedure. If the patient hip flexor is stronger than hip extensor, but when we do assessment on Nuna, we find hip extension torque always greater than flexion torque. Um, I will type though this, this answer also. Um, uh, to you directly, if you can write us the, this, this uh, through the email. Uh, because uh, I would need some a little bit more detail to answer this question. Uh, about the research uh, papers that have proven the medical benefits of using Luna EMG compared to conventional uh, methods. Well, yes, we do have um uh, one paper about uh, applying luna emg uh, into the uh, multiple sclerosis patients and now we are uh, in the ongoing process of the uh, study among the um, stroke patients rehabilitation um can Luna EMG be used with patients undergoing per permanent peacemaker? Yes, it's about the peacemaker. Um, Luna EMG can be used. It's, uh, there is a magnet, but um, it's not directly uh, forbidden to use Luna. It's better to not to use Luna closely to the pacemaker uh, place. So we do not recommend it for the arm, the left arm. But other um, places, uh, other limbs are uh, possible. Uh, wait a minute. <clears throat> uh, uh, if Luna EMG uh, resistant to noise, yes, I. I don't really understand about the noise. Is it easy to cancel the noise? Uh, the noise in Luna EMG programs, we can of course make it in the silent mode and we, you can turn off all uh, the Luna um, noises. And uh, yes, Luna EMG can be used only we by a qualified therapist at rehabilitation hospitals. What, uh, um, Always when we sell Luna EMG, we as a clinical team, so me and my two colleagues are the one, the one who train the patient, the, the therapist, train the staff at the hospital how to use uh, Luna EMG. So in early stage, more often we use passive movement with Luna EMG for patient. Well, it depends on the patient condition. We always recommend uh, to start with the passive movement. Um, so uh, the passive movement as the warm up before other exercises, if it's possible. Uh, and um, we can also uh, apply another types of therapies when um, the patient gets stronger, gets better, progress the stage. So 
Um, it's also very good to apply, as I told you during the webinar, to apply the passive movement uh, together with um, the uh, together with the electrodes, just to observe if during the passive movement the patient is actively assisting. Um, Yeah, okay, so I think uh, we we mostly covered all the questions. Uh, if not, please uh, feel free to contact us at uh, um, through, through, through the email. Uh, so you can always uh, contact us at uh, webinars. Uh, a exotech.com or directly to me so dominica.kozak um ape exotech.com so you can see the um, email on the screen uh, um, we have uh, the videos of patients um who are the stroke patients mostly uh so so we can uh compare uh, the patient's results before and after the, the treatments. Oh, I have another questions on the, we the webinar chat. Uh, about the spasticity, uh, the contraindication for losing LULAMG is the Ashward above the Ashward free scale. So we can uh, treat uh, all the patients with the spasticity lower than Ashward free with LULAMG. Uh, about selling Luna EMG, I think there are already about 150 Luna CMG worldwide. About the progress rate when compared to with and without Luna EMG, we have made the study um, that um, we we compared uh, the therapy of um, standard uh, physiotherapy, so uh, one to one therapy, uh, and one group had Luna EMG and one group had um, another uh, rehabilitation device uh, like rotor limb rotor. Uh, and those patients who are, were trained with Luna EMG uh, got um, uh, lower spasticity uh, after the treatment and also uh, a little bit higher scores in the Lovett scale. So the manual, manual muscle tests was like greater and they had more um, tight circumference because uh, the aim of the study was to improve the um, strength of, of the lower limbs. Okay, so I think we have Oh, this is the very uh, uh, interesting and important questions. I feel that the product is very useful for standardizing rehabilitation. On the other hand, uh, are there any criticism of this product from physical therapists? So for example, their jobs will be gone. Of course, we do, uh, we love the physiotherapist. I am the physiotherapist and I, um, I use it as a tool. So we need to remember that always the physiotherapist is the brain of the operation and we don't want to replace the therapist with the robots we want to uh, get them very interesting very useful tool for work to make their work uh, quicker faster um, more um, challenging for the patients more interesting and more engaging on the uh, for the patients so we don't really want the therapies to be gone. They are very, very needed. Uh, 
Okay, so thank you for all the questions. I am happy to hear your questions if there are any more um, and you can always address them uh, by emails. Once more, I, I would love to invite you for another webinar about the oncological rehabilitation. And uh, for now, I would like to thank you for your attention, for all the magnificent Kant's uh, question and interesting questions which I could uh, uh, could reply and could answer. So um, stay health um, and I wish you a pleasant day. Thank you.